Today's message title is Christ and Spiritual Leadership. From Numbers 16, 28 to 38. There was this Levite, and his name was Korah. Korah. Uh, him and other leaders of Israel rose up against the leadership of Moses and Aaron. They were complaining, oh, you guys are really bad. Uh, you led us out of Egypt, which was a land flowing with uh, milk and honey. And uh, we're just stuck in this wilderness, in the desert. We're going nowhere. We're not going to uh, get to the land of Canaan. So they were uh, arguing, complaining, and uh, they rose up against the leadership of Aaron and Moses. By doing this, they were treating God with contempt. It's from Numbers 16, 30. They were only arguing against people, but because God chose them and God raised them as leaders, uh, to uh, rise up against them was uh, rising up against God and uh, showing contempt to the leaders uh, was same as uh, showing contempt to God. Uh, this can be very troubling uh, because uh, a lot of people have been hurt uh, by wrong spiritual leadership. Uh, maybe even most of you uh, may have had that experience. A leader you know, is giving you a hard time, is even abusing his, her her authority. And uh, once you go through those experiences, uh, we, there's that uh, rebelliousness against any kind of spiritual leadership. Uh, but the way God works in our lives is that uh, He sends lead, leaders, spiritual leaders in our lives, and God uses those spiritual leaders does not mean that those leaders are perfect. Was Moses perfect? No. He married a Cushite, and uh, some people rebelled against Moses for that marriage. It was his second marriage. Uh, I don't know if some people say that his first wife uh, may have passed away. And that probably was the reason why Moses married for the second time. We don't know for sure. Uh, but uh, people did not like the fact that he had that marriage. And some people rebelled against Moses. Aaron and Miriam, uh, to be more specific. right? But God punishes Miriam for her, her rebelliousness. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, God basically you know confirms that it's Moses that uh, God had chosen to be a leader, and God will continue to use Moses. So it's like that. God chooses leaders not because they're perfect; they are far from perfect. And nevertheless, that's how God blesses His people. The people of the covenant, people of the promise. We are all people of the promise because we have the promise of Jesus Christ in our lives. Uh, so, uh, let me look at number one, God and spiritual leadership. All authorities have been established by God. And this is from Romans 13.1. Uh, of course, there are evil authorities, and I think I see one uh, up in North Korea. Uh, anyway, uh, but even that has been uh, established by God. Uh, so we have to pray uh, for that nation, we have to pray for that leader, right? 
uh, so that the leader may repent and come to the Lord. Uh, God chooses a leader to lead the people of the promise, and we are the people of the promise. We have the promise of Jesus Christ. What is the promise of Jesus Christ? On Mount Calvary, on the cross, Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, has solved our problem of separation from God. Has solved our problem of sin. Has solved our problem of Satan, forces of darkness. Forces of darkness? Where are they? Well, Apostle John says that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. There's no way we can defeat the forces of darkness. Doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't matter how hard you try. All people are under sin. The moment one person is born into this world, that person is separated from God, spiritually dead, and is under sin. And like I said, it doesn't matter how good you are. And no offense, you're all good people, right? <laughs> doesn't matter how good we are. Doesn't matter how strong we are, we cannot solve those problems. Problem of Satan, sin, and separation from God on our own. And that's why God gave us Jesus Christ and His the covenant. Covenant is the strongest form of promise. I said this, I told you this last Sunday. So Jesus Christ is the covenant, the promise, you believe it, it's yours. right? You don't have to uh, study so hard. I went to a seminary in Pasadena. You don't have to go to that seminary. You just believe it and it's yours. You don't have to try so hard. You don't have to fast. Some people like to fast for 40 days, right? No eating for 40 days. I love food. I'm going to be very honest with you. No in and out. No spaghetti. Uh, what else is there? Uh, pasta, yes, thank you. I love pasta. No pasta for 40 days, right? Only water. That might drive me crazy. Uh, but so, you don't even have to fast. Just believe it, and it's yours. And that's why it's the good news. Gospel means good news. It's good news for you because this promise is yours if you believe it. You don't have to try so hard. right? You don't have to be Mother Teresa. You have to do all that good work every single day in your life. I'm, I'm not telling you to do bad work every single day of your life. <laughs> you get my point. My point is, you don't have to be perfect. But just believe. And so God chooses a leader to lead the people of the covenant of the promise. And God chooses a team of leaders to lead his people. Yes, God chose Moses, but there was also Aaron. And there was also Miriam. There were also 70 leaders in Israel. There were many other leaders in Israel. So God uses a team of leaders, even at our church. And I'm not the only leader here, am I? Right? We have other leaders, and as a team, uh, we are leading uh, this congregation, this uh, church. Christ and spiritual leadership. God chooses a leader to be a witness of Christ. God chose Paul. You know, Apostle Paul, right? God chose Paul. And he was far, far from being perfect. He persecuted the believers. He wanted to kill all the believers. What did they do? Nothing. But just because they believed that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ, he wanted to kill them. He was persecuting them. He was even traveling far to get rid of those 
<laughs> believers. <laughs> but God chose, uh, God chose Paul. God can choose anybody as a spiritual leader. God chose Moses. Who was he? He was a priest of Egypt. Well, that was long, long time ago. When he was 40 years old, what did he do? He killed an Egyptian. So now, he was a criminal, right? He was a fugitive. I don't know if you saw that movie, The Fugitive, uh, <laughs> years ago back, but what is a fugitive? You run away for your life, right? And you're running away all the time. And that was Moses. He ran away for his life, and he went all the way up to the Midian. So he's living in the desert, right? And when he's 80 years old, how many of you are 80 years old or over? Uh, <laughs> nobody, right? If you are 80 years old, you are an old man, right? You are a, let me put it this way, you, you, you are a senior citizen, right? With all due respect, uh, but you are old. And that's who Moses was. He was a criminal and a fugitive, and an old man. And God chooses that guy, <laughs> Moses, right? So God can choose anybody. Can God choose me? Of course. God can choose you too. But why does God choose a spiritual leader? So that he or she can be a witness of Christ. That's the very reason why God chose Paul. It says so in Acts 9.15. Let me read it for you. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Yeah. Proclaim whose name? The name of Jesus Christ. Why is that name so important? Why is that name, Jesus Christ, so important? Jesus means God is our salvation. Christ means? Christ means the anointed true king who crushed Satan. The anointed true priest who has solved our problem of sin. The anointed true prophet who has solved our problem of separation from God. And that's all in that one word, Christ. That one word, Christ, has all that meaning, right? And that basically explains what our salvation is all about. That's why that name is so important and God chose Jesus Christ, I should say, chose Paul to be a witness of his name. God uses a team of leaders to be a witness of Christ. So it wasn't just uh, it wasn't just Paul that God used, but um, he used a team of leaders. So it was Paul and Silas. It was Paul and Barnabas. It was Paul and Timothy. God always chooses a leader and uses him or her. But at the same time, God always chooses a team to be a witness, uh, to be a witness of his name. Spiritual leadership in the field. The church must move as one body in the field. What is a church? Church is a, uh, the church is the body of Christ, right? Church is the body of Christ. So it's one body. And a local church is very important. It's very important that you belong to a local church. That's how you are nourished spiritually. That's how you are spiritually strengthened. I know a lot of people, they stay home and watch a Joel on Sundays or even Mondays. How I know? Because I, I used to do that too. <laughs> I used to watch uh, Joel Osteen at home. Uh, okay, but it's very important that you belong to a local church. 
Because that's how God will nourish you and strengthen you spiritually. And as a, uh, as a body of Christ, uh, we have to move as one, right? Right now, my body uh, is moving as one. Uh, it's not like my feet uh, are going that way, but my head wants to go the other way. Uh, you know, I, I may look stupid, but <laughs> uh, I'm just giving you an analogy, right? As one body of Christ, we have to move uh, in one direction, right? One direction. I'm not talking about that boy band. Are they still performing? Okay. Faith says no, so I have faith. <laughs> in Jesus Christ, right? We all have faith in Jesus Christ. We're one body of Christ and we move in one direction. As one body of Christ. In the field. In the field. Just as Moses and Aaron did. Just as Paul and Barnabas did. Just as Paul and Silas did. Every believer is an ambassador of Christ in the field. You know what an ambassador is, right? You are living in a foreign country, but you are representing your home country. So we have many ambassadors from different nations in the United States. Uh, and we call them amb ambassadors. We all are ambassadors. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are representing Jesus Christ in this world in our fields. And as an ambassador, you have authority. You know, ambassadors, they have great, great privileges. Did you know that? They have great privileges. They are not subject to the law of uh, this country. Did you know that? We are all amb ambassadors of Christ. We have great spiritual authority. Because we represent Jesus Christ. We represent the kingdom of God. Apostle Paul said, our citizenship belongs in heaven. Right? Yes, we are citizens of the uh, United States, but we also have the heavenly citizenship. Right? Do you have your heavenly citizenship? You believe that Jesus is the Christ? Your citizenship belongs in heaven. You don't need an ID, right? I got many, many IDs. Do you want to see? I got, a, uh, I got an ID from International Ministerial Fellowship. I got an ID from uh, DMV. Uh, I forgot what DMV stood for, but uh, Department of uh, uh, Many Vehicles? Is that what it's? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's not very important, right? My point is, identity is very important. Who are you? You need an ID to uh, get on the plane, right? You need an ID to travel other countries. Identity is very important. What is your identity? You are, a citizen, you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And you are a child of God. That's your identity. And as an ambassador of Christ, you have great spiritual authority. You've got to use that authority. I use it every single day. Spiritual leaders raise disciples of Christ in the field. So it's great that you have spiritual authority, but what are you, what are you going to do with that spiritual authority? Win the, lotter, uh, win the lottery? Uh, what are you going to do with that spiritual authority? Make more money, become rich? What are you going to do with that spiritual authority? Save people. Raise disciples. That's what Apostle Paul did. 
He had great spiritual authority. People were being healed. Uh, he, uh, miracles were being performed. But with that spiritual authority, he saved lives. He saved people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he also raised disciples. Disciples like Timothy. And there were many other. So here's the conclusion. If you exercise your spiritual leadership in the field, you will see the kingdom of God come in your field and will also make disciples of Christ. So today I want to challenge all of you. You are all ambassadors of Christ. You have that spiritual authority in Jesus Christ. So what are you going to do with that authority? Become famous? Make more money? <laughs> Become the President of the United States? Use that to save people. To raise disciples. Wherever you are. Uh, that is the greatest blessing. Right? We don't, we're not going to be here forever, right? Uh, but when you go to heaven, uh, you're not going to have money, uh, you're not going to have your condos or houses, <laughs> Mustang, sorry, <laughs> to keep pointing at you, <laughs> Ferrari, Lamborghini, uh, but you will see the people that you have saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you will see the disciples that you have raised on this earth. So I want to give you this challenge for, this, uh, for you this week. Raise disciples. Spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that's why we are here. Let me pray. Father God, thank you for giving us this spiritual leadership in Jesus Christ. Help us to use it in our fields, whether it may be our homes our uh, workplaces, uh, our um, schools, or wh whatever they may be. Help us to use it and help us to raise disciples wherever we are, all for the kingdom of God. I pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.